from the songs we just worked um, and stepped out in faith on and the joys and concerns just shared, there is, God does give us more than we can handle at times. <laughs> whether that is in the really hard places of life or whether that's just in the unfamiliarity of a song as we're doing our best and the words are perfect, but it's just different enough that it's hard. This is a piece of life. This is a piece of trying to live a future reality in a present reality. A future kingdom of justice and peace and loving kindness in a present reality where there's still a lot of evil and sin and brokenness. And so as we pray, the center of our whole being, thy kingdom come. As we claim that we are Christian, that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, and we pray for that reign of heaven on earth, we realized we've kind of stepped in it, that we are way over our heads, way beyond our pay grade, that there's too much. There are days where it's funny to laugh at the overwhelming, and there are days that it kind of breaks us. And so in this prayer that Jesus teaches us, Jesus first asks us to ask for his will, for his kingdom. It's that accountability that we can't get away from, that it's not about us and what we want and what we would like to be in control of. But it's that we have, in fact, chosen to surrender to him, to accept his kingdom, his vision, his desire. And what I love is that immediately there is support. Give us this day our daily bread. Because, yes, God will ask for more than we are able to give. But God will not ask for more than we are able to give while God is feeding us and living in us and with us and through us. And so we pray this day for daily bread because life is beautiful, but life is hard and scary and intimidating. But we don't go this way alone. We don't rely on our own capacity or lack thereof. We have a God who will meet us daily and daily give us what we need to live for God's kingdom to come. That's what our youth are doing right now at Rock and learning right now that God is there for them and will give them what they need. That there is a call and a purpose, a skill set that has been woven into them. There is a need that is beyond what they can meet. But there's a God who calls them to that more to that beyond, asks them to grow beyond themselves, to trust beyond where they feel comfortable and safe, knowing that God and other companions will be with them every step of the way. And that's something that we all need no matter what age we are. Part of being a Christian is what we pray in that Wesleyan covenant prayer. Let me be empty. Let me be filled. Let me be laid aside for thee or used by thee. It's both and. And it's all the time. And that's part of the reason that we started small groups. Because I don't know about you all. But I need help every day. And so once a week is not enough for me 
to be able to live God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. And so having time set aside at least one more day of the week, and I was just sharing with our group on Wednesday, I really love that it's in the middle of the week because it's that recentering, like, come back, Kate. But it's space for support and for accountability so that we don't give up when it becomes intimidating or hard and start to find shortcuts but also so that we remember, right? Because how easy is it to forget that God's there to give us God's power? It's not on us alone. And so I have another day of the week where I am able to come and be fed. And there's so much power in that. As we think of who God is calling us to be, of where God is calling us to go, of what God is calling us to do. Think of a time in your life where you were in the right place at the right time for the right reasons, where you were in the place where you knew God needed you to be. There's a prayer, a Celtic prayer, from King Oswald, who had one of those moments. And without going into the details, his prayer of remembrance of what God said to them, said to him in that moment was, I have a place for you, but it will take all of you to fill it. Where are those places where we have given God all of us? We have emptied it out. We have laid it on the field. We have put it there. And then where are those places where you remember being confused? Because that was all of what you had, and yet you weren't done. You weren't broken. You weren't bitter. You weren't at your end. You were fine. You had energy, you're okay. Yes, the nap was going to be needed. Yes, some extra food was going to be needed. Yes, an extra retreat time was going to be needed later on. But for right then, you're okay. You're completely emptied out, but you're okay. That place for me is in camping ministry, serving as counselors. I have never felt more emptied out, more of every cell of my body, every neural pathway of my brain used to be present and to care for the kids. And I've never felt more tired, ever. I've also never felt more alive and more exhilarated. There's a sweet spot that happens that is amazing. And that's part of the reason that I love retreats like Rock, like the men's retreat that we have coming up, the mission trips that we have being planned. Because day to day life goes and we have a rhythm and it's hard sometimes to open up and to remember how God is trying to break in. But go to another rhythm where there is a very real need right in front of you where you are there for that single purpose to build that ramp, to meet that need, and to give it all, to lay everything you have in the field because that ramp is going to be done. And so you put in the extra hours, you're exhausted at the end, and then you still don't go to bed, you debrief. You talk about what happened and where you saw God and where you didn't and how that felt and what doubts or questions or reassurance that brought up and raised for you. It is all body, soul, mind, engaged and active. And daily bread being given so that as you are emptied, you are also filled. Now, that's not something that we finite creatures can sustain infinitely all the time. But that is the calling. This is the journey. This is where transformation happens in us and in our world. And so I hope 
that we can be a church that does the accountability, but also does the support, that asks one another to empty ourselves out because we see how much there is at stake, but also a community that supports one another so that emptying out doesn't last, but is refilled. And, and it's not to be trapped in just a hamster wheel cycle of feeling used and then refilled just to be used again. It's because we see the transformation that's happening around us, that we sense it in ourselves, that we see how much more we can do and how much more God can use us. And we want that. We desire that, we hunger, and we thirst for that. We have amazing kids. And I wish all of you could have been in the small group moments to hear what they were piecing together and putting together from the day and what that meant for their faith. I wish we were there to see when some incidents came up and how they had each other's back. And they took care of each other instantly and instantaneously without thinking about it, without debating it. It was a natural reflex for them. That's what I want for us. And I hope that parts of that can come through our small groups and growing a connection together that these youth are experiencing together. And what's beautiful is that our youth are doing that this weekend with people they haven't even met except once, maybe twice before, maybe seen around school, because this is our first pilot event of being a cluster youth ministry and joining together with May's Chapel and with the Texas Charge. So it's uncomfortable. It breaks up the rhythm that our youth in Amped have built and known. But the natural ebb and flow of connecting and coming together with them and intermingling with the others and then coming back to safe space and home, right? And having some time with the friends and the deep and the depth that they've built up in their relationships together from having known each other for so long. That's what I hope for us and for our small groups, that there can be a gathering together in the depth of the connections we have, because we are going to connect with some people more than others, and I hope that those connections can go deep and be lifetime connections of support and accountability. But there's also new people that come into our lives, and may there be connections with others and small groups that we haven't known that fill in places of wonder and awe and our new places of support and accountability. In essence, this is daily work. And it is daily work that God calls us to and it is daily work that God feeds us and gives us what we need to be able to do. So may we move forward knowing that much is required of us but knowing that we will be fed and God will be with us every step of the way. Amen. This week, if you have not started gathering in groups, whether that be in the small groups or in groups of your own, please give it a try. Just after coming off of this weekend, it's, it is a balm for the soul. And, and I know that vulnerability can be difficult, so pick somebody safe to start with if you've not done it before. But set aside a time where you are open and it's easier for God to reach you, to give you the power and the nourishment that you need to be able to fight the battle that you are fighting right now. We don't have to do this alone. There's a God who created the cosmos who's ready to work this piece of life, this calling with us. We could stand and join and sing in our closing hymn, What Feast of Love, 3170.